Hey, hey y'all. y'all. We're back. Yes. Later than <laughs> promised. We have completely missed an episode. We have. Um, it got busy. It Sorry, got everyone. Extra super duper uber busy. It did. Um, Just like everything was kind of bonkers for a while. And then we're picking up because summer is... Is... Is quickly approaching, <laughs> and and so we're getting busier here at the library, and yeah. And then there's just a lot of things happening. Yeah, we're changing to a new computer system. We'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Lots of programming. Just so <laughs> I've been doing a lot of outreach. So much programming. I'm not in the building very often. Yeah, you just run away. I know, I'm just out in the wild. <laughs> Spreading my love of books to children, to the youths. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Well, you spread your love of podcasting anyway. I did. Yeah, I did Career Day at Mark Twain Elementary. And we're working up something special with them for the month of May. That involves the podcast. They don't know about it yet, though, so I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah. So that may be They were very excited by the prospect. Yes. Of podcasting. Yes. They were very sweet. We sang some Backstreet Boys, which is <laughs> always what I love to do in my free time. Um, but yeah, they were really good kids, and I had a blast at Mark Twain. So, And then I did outreach at Central High School yesterday. Experienced my first fire drill as an adult. Why was there a fire drill at, on the day you were there? That's a good question. Um, I'm not entirely sure. That's a Seinfeld skit. <laughs> it was so, it was great. <laughs> but we had a really good time. We're at Lafayette tomorrow. Which, when you guys hear this, it'll be like two weeks ago. A week, oh my gosh, it's already, it's April 25th, you guys. Yeah. Oh my goodness sakes. It'll be, Monday is uh, the first. Okay. So it'll be last week yeah. when you guys listen to this. But I'm at Lafayette tomorrow. Gonna do some outreach. I've got quite a bit coming up so and this week is library national week? library week national library week. today is national library workers day oh mm-hmm. that's why we got a goodie it is okay it is so yeah go visit your public library even if it's not us especially if it's us but <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah anything else what's going on um not, I I was going to say not a whole lot, but there is a whole lot. Yeah. Um, the main thing is that we're going to be switching to a new computer system. We are. Evergreen is our new system. Yes. And so this is just like our system for checking things in and out and keeping patrons' cards and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also our online catalog. Yes. So our website's going to look this. So for people out there, the website's going to look the same. Right. But when you go to the actual catalog to like look at books, mm-hmm. that is going to be different. Right. And there's going to be a few different things coming up. Um, as we switch over, it just works a little bit differently mm-hmm. than our old system did. So there will be a few minor changes to the way that um, everything works. But the main thing is that you're going to get access to a whole lot more books a whole lot easier. Mm-hmm. Because we are in the... As well as joining or um, going to this new computer system, at the same time, we're joining the Missouri Evergreen Consortium. Right. Which is just a bunch of libraries in Missouri. I think we're like number 42 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That all share books. Right. So if we don't have something and someone else in the consortium has it, you can get it a lot faster than something like an interlibrary loan Mm -hmm. or us having to order it or anything like that. Right. So it's going to open us up to having a lot more materials available a lot easier for everybody. Which is so exciting. We did the training for this, was that two weeks ago? Something like that. Yeah, so we did a day and a half of training. We closed for that, which we talked about on the last podcast. Yeah, last time we did mention that we would be closed, Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, um, so that's done. Um, I think we're all just ready to do it now. Yeah. I just want to like, get in be there. 
um, May 11th is yeah. the day that it's going to go live. Mm-hmm. So on May 10th, 9th, and 8th, mm-hmm. I believe, you have to keep up, <laughs> keep yeah. updated with the calendar and everything, and just come in and talk to us. Yeah. Um, but for the three days before we go live, we're only going to be able to check things out to people mm-hmm. that have cards. Right. Um, is what it seems like right now. Yeah. So you should still be able to come in and get what you need. Yeah. Um, it's just going to be a little bit hectic. Yeah, for a few for days. three days. <laughs> and then once we go live, that'll be like us figuring everything out. Right. So. Right. But once we get the hang of it, it'll be a good thing for everybody. I imagine everybody. just by the next week, it'll everything will be running yeah. smoothly. Smooth sailing from here on up. It'll be good. Yeah. These are good changes coming, I think. Yeah. So. It, I like the system. It works better for the things that we need it to do. Right. And I think it's easier to like search books for people. Oh, for sure. Things like that. For sure. Really easy to put them on hold. And something people have always been asking for, we will send text notifications now. Yes. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. That's uh, so much more convenient. Mm-hmm. I would really rather have a text than an email personally, but. Yes. I have so many emails. Ugh. Yeah, who wants to check all that? Apparently not me. And you'll just get it, like, it, you don't have to check it. You just get a text, you know? Right. That's nice. Yeah, for sure. So, um, we hung out outside of work. Well, I don't know that I would count that. We went to, Jacob and I were on a trivia team together on Saturday. Yes. So we kind of hung we out. We collectively provided two answers that everyone else didn't know, maybe. <sighs> It wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. Um, we had a good time, though. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a fun night. It was, it had been, I think they hadn't done that. Was it only skipped one year or two years? I can't remember. I think it might have skipped two, I think it might have skipped 20, maybe three years. Maybe oh they gosh. skipped 20, 21 and 22. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um. And we did not win. No. We were middle of the pack. It yeah. was us in the children's department. We did okay. We did okay. <laughs> and we did not. We did really good on the food category. Yeah, that was the one we like blew it out of the water. Yeah. We know our snacks. Yeah. We only missed one question. Yeah. And tied with three other teams. And then Elizabeth did not come through for us and pull the high card to determine who actually won the round. So we got right. nothing. <laughs> no, we got a <laughs> nothing whole lot but of nothing. a good time and fried pickles. Yeah, I had fried pickles. Yeah, you shared them with me. They were really good, actually. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Anything else you can think of? Summer readings coming up. Oof. It is like quickly approaching. Yep, because it starts in June, right? Yeah, uh, pre-registration starts in May. So we can start pre-registering May first. I believe so. Okay. On Beanstack, it should be on there. Yep, we're going to use Beanstack again this year. It's been working out really well mm-hmm. the past couple of years. And you can use Beanstack all year round. I don't know that people know that. Like, yeah. you can use if you're uh, familiar with Goodreads, Beanstack is very similar to Goodreads in that you can just log your reading on there. That way, you know what you have read and what you liked or didn't like. Um, you can even write book reviews on there. Yeah, and then we have challenges throughout the year. Yeah, we do like the winter reading challenge, just like little things like that. Summer readings, obviously, on there. Yeah, we do staff challenges on there sometimes. So, so yeah. get ready for what's the theme this year, Kelsey? All together now. <laughs> it's all together now. That's the That's theme. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice and broad. Yes, it is yeah. very broad. I prefer like dinosaurs yeah or, the you ocean know. theme was really good right you know princesses or whatever i would prefer yeah. that kind of theme because it makes planning things a little easier programming wise but we're doing like a lot of collaboration with the community is how we've kind of interpreted interpreted all together now so we're doing like um an ice skating night at Bodie ice arena Ooh. as one of our programming in I'm july a- I scout. I scout. I skated. Yeah. Since I was a little boy. I went to a birthday party with my daughter, Hadley, like 
Mm, it was like back in December probably, and she she wanted to ice skate really bad, and I was like, dude, you don't know how to ice skate, <laughs> which means I have to ice skate. And so I put skates on, and I went around one lap, and I thought I was gonna die. Like my ankles hurt so bad, and I was <laughs> terrified. Like I was like so stiff that I was like, if I fall right now, I'm gonna like really injure myself because I was so stiff the whole lap. Because yeah. I was scared I was gonna fall. Yeah. Yeah. I put on roller skates. Oh no. Two years ago, mm-hmm. and was like, nope. No, it's so scary when you're a grown up. Yeah. I was like, I can't fall no. on these knees. Yeah, and you know that like <laughs> if I fell on ice, I would not be able to get out. I would have to like slide off. <laughs> and it would be so embarrassing. That's all I was thinking about the whole time. Like if I go down, I'm I'm down. I'm not getting back up. I'm gonna be severely injured, like an actual injury. No. Hard pass. And good news about the the roller skating, if you haven't seen it in St. Joe. B and J's mm-hmm. got sold. Yeah. So it's going to continue operations. That's good. The only skating center around, you know. Why did they sell it? Do we know? I the people that owned it were, I think, like trying to retire. Oh, They'd okay. owned it for like forty, fifty I years. I know or something. Uh, the previous owner, Amy. She's really cool. I've yeah. done Zumba with. She teaches Zumba at B and J. Yeah. And so I've done Zumba with her, and she's awesome. She comes to Cup of Joe oh. every week. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. I see her every Wednesday coming in. Um, I'm excited for summer reading. We've got a big kickoff planned, and it'll be a good time. We're having a snow cone truck. Oh, wow. Which I'm pumped about. That's nice. Yeah. And then um, Skylar, who used to work here, her family owns a company. Like, they created a company where they travel and do, like, carnival games. And Uh so they're doing all the games for us. Oh, Where's it going to be this year? It's at Carnegie. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Okay. They have a nice big park. Yeah. Yeah. property. So we like rotate through who hosts the kickoff. So this is Carnegie's turn. So we will be there. It's like the first Saturday of June, I think. So yeah. It'll be fun. You'll see me there. In all my glory. You won't see me. I try. I wish I could go. I, mm, I tried <laughs> to get you to volunteer. <laughs> Maybe I'll come by for a snow cone. There you go. Cause some chaos for you to clean up. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I will be there. I'm sure Hadley will be there helping. Yeah. I struggle with those events, though, because it's hot. Yeah, that's I'm the, not my a main summer thing. Gal. Is like, I don't do summer. Yeah. I don't do summer outside. I need a fall reading program. <laughs> I'll work that kickoff all day at the pumpkin patch. Yeah. That'd be a <laughs> The pumpkin patch. They gotta, we gotta rearrange when school happens in a year. Right. I don't know. I'm a big fan of year-round schooling, though. Yeah. Just solely for the child care aspect of it. I have no problem with that. Well, what else? News? You have some news for me? All of the news... Oh, no. ...is so sad. I don't want it. I it's don't want it. Back to our uh, regularly <laughs> scheduled programming of book banning. No, no. We're getting to the point where it's now library closing. Um, Okay. So there was, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this county, Llano, Llano, L-L-A-N-O, in Texas, county. Um, They had decided they were going to ban some books, Mm -hmm. and some residents of the town decided to sue the library. Okay. Um. And the judge ordered that while the lawsuit was going on, that the library had to put the books back. Okay. And as soon as the judge said, while the, li- just, while the lawsuit's going on, mm-hmm. you have to put the books back. Immediate, their next step was they held a meeting to just close down the libraries. Okay. Entirely. For 17 books. Okay. That they wanted to have removed. For example... East Hills alone probably has a hundred thousand, mm-hmm. eighty thousand right. books just in our branch. Right. And in this library, seventeen of them that someone had an issue with were returned. Ugh. And they said, let's just close the library down. Okay. Now they ended up 
voting not to close the library down. Thank God. But this is still all up in the air because the lawsuit about the original banning of the books has not been resolved. Um, they could still shut the library down at any time. It's like the city council um, that has to make that decision. Right. It's the Llano County Commissioners. It's one of those situations where it's kind of a small... Yeah, I assumed as much. ...smaller area. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is just a lot of articles about how the book banning efforts are becoming more concentrated. And then we talked once about, it's not just, and this is kind of the thing that's getting in the news right now, is mm-hmm. that it's not just like a parent sees something that they don't like and goes and talks to someone about it. Right. It is like uh, political groups, political action groups, Mm -hmm. Facebook groups, those kinds of things, um, distributing lists of like hundreds or even thousands of materials there. Of books. Right. And then they just take that Mm -hmm. and take, and they, it's like a template they make that Mm -hmm. you can take to your library. Right. And say, I want all of these removed. Right. And it's not, now it's not just them. It's also like library boards and county commissioners and city governments. Right. Are starting to get in Mm -hmm. on this politically motivated. Sure. um, Push. Mm -hmm. Um, If they see that it's going to help them politically. Uh, get reelected and whatever. Right. Um, people on those boards are starting to embrace openly the book banning efforts. And then in some places, people are just now being elected to these places for that sole purpose. Right. Um, that's like their platform is I'll get these things removed. <gasps> so oh, these gosh. issues, because it's kind of a double issue where there's, it's still a little more concentrated in the school libraries. Yeah. But it's coming now to be... I've got some numbers from the ALA and PEN America, which is a free speech advocacy group mm-hmm. that shows it's kind of turning tides and it's about 40% now public libraries, mm-hmm. 60% still school libraries, seeing these kinds of pushes. It's creeping up, though. That's scary. Yeah, because, I mean, in a lot of places, school boards are directly voted for. Yeah. They're like their own special taxing districts. Mm -hmm. And then in different states, things run differently um, in some place for public libraries. Right. You know, some places the city directly funds things. In some places the county funds things. In some places, there's special taxing districts. Right. So there's different levels that people can get onto different boards. Like here, we don't even vote for a board that runs the library, but in some places, those people are voted for. Yeah. So there's different ways they can, uh, that if someone's interested in banning books or banning certain books, they can get in on the policy level right. where they live. Um, the ALA has reported that book bans um, have doubled in 2022 and, and then that's from 2021 when it had it reached a historic high in the past 20 years of them following it it was the most they'd ever seen in 21 doubled uh, in 22 that just really scares me you guys yes like really really scares me and it, it it's their ta- it's the tactics that are really extra concerning, as we'll get to about our Missouri specific <laughs> right uh, tactics. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, essentially, like the book bans are happening all over the place. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. We know it's happening. People are fighting against it. It's kind of at a stalemate of. Right. Still getting a little bit worse, but people are still pushing back a lot. Yeah. And then we come to Missouri. Um, Missouri made some national headlines recently because of their particular efforts in this whole debacle. Mm-hmm. So in Missouri, we actually don't have things where like uh, 
cities or counties run libraries, they are special taxing districts, just like school districts. Right. So you can have county libraries, city libraries, regional libraries, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But they are generally kind of insulated from political pressure because the way that they are, the boards are filled out. Right. Is by appointment from like a mayor. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, you can vote for your mayor and then, you know, influence it. But there's just a step back. You can't just immediately directly vote for people that want to, say, ban books onto a board. Right. The mayor's or whoever's in charge of that particular district Mm -hmm. has to appoint people. Right, right. So, and then because we are special districts, and that's really the only involvement that this the government has mm-hmm. is appointing board members. Right. Uh, from there, li- public libraries in Missouri are pretty much self-governing. Um, we report certain things to the Missouri Secretary of State for to get certain kinds of funding. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, we have our tax, like a, a property tax, and then we collect that by as long as it's been voted for, it's just collected when all their other property taxes are collected. Mm-hmm. The money comes to us and we distribute it however it's been decided by the board. Right. Um, it's not like a city government can say, we're not paying for the library anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not like a county can say, we're not going to cut, like it happened in Texas. Right. There's no other entity that can get together and just say, we're going to stop funding right. this. However, the Missouri... Uh, House of Representatives Mm -hmm. has we do get state funding now in a large er, we're about a medium sized public library here at SJPL Mm -hmm. Um, anything we get maybe two or three percent of our budget from state money and that's mostly in the form of grants that we use for specific things like buying the hot spots um, that people love right um, and other like technology grants, bigger systems than us are pretty much, I mean, it's 1% or less of their budget. And then smaller, like very rural libraries, it can be up to, you know, 10% of a budget, 15% right. of a budget um, is the state funding. And Missouri, the GOP lawmakers in the House decided to strip state funding out of their newest spending bill. And just, it was $45 million. Mm-hmm. Um, and they decided to just completely withdraw that from the spending bill. So that's mostly money that's going to be going to the most rural mm-hmm. places for things like having their computers hook up to internet. Right. Um, <laughs> a lot of it is for technology related things. Uh-huh. So that people that live in those areas can come in and, and you know, do their taxes. Right. Or other things, you know. Pay their bills. Yeah, the things that they do at the library. Right. Oh, I hate the story, Jacob. Yes. And they did this in retaliate. They say. I mean, it's not. <laughs> it's, I'm not trying to be political here. Right. They say. Yeah. We're doing this because. And in retaliation. Yeah. Because. Um. The Missouri Library Association Association and School Library Association um, sued the state for language that was added to a sexual assault bill that makes it a criminal offense to provide uh, pornographic material or explicitly pornographic material to minors. Right. um, Without defining, like, any of those things in a library setting. Um. And so the, the language of that bill is so broad mm-hmm. and undefined and nobody knows how it would be enforced and nobody knows what would be enforced. So that's kind of what this whole lawsuit's about. The ACLU is representing and they're doing this uh, lawsuit pro bono. Right. Which means that they are not being paid. Yeah. And then... The uh, 
what's his this particular guy's name? Cody Smith. Missouri Representative Cody Smith. Um, has specifically said that this is in retaliation, this cutting off the funding, because they don't want to subsidize the lawsuit against themselves. Mm-hmm. We're not paying for the lawsuit right. <laughs> against the and also like individual libraries right. wouldn't be paying for that lawsuit. It's the Missouri Library Association. Correct. Um, so the whole thing is just kind of uh, a big mess. mess. <laughs> yeah. Big, big mess. It's just infuriating. Like, And now I think that yesterday or the day before that the Senate, Missouri Senate, voted to restore that money. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of... Because people that I know, like, from outside of Missouri were, like, really concerned. They were, um, you know, if the state cuts off funding, that means you're out of a job. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, no, it's it, the state cuts off funding, but it's, like, 1% of our budget. Yeah. But for those smaller rural libraries... Right, that could be that a reality. That could be, you know, if you lose 10 or 15% of your budget, mm-hmm. you could be closing. I mean, right. if you can't pay your insurance for your buildings, you have to close. Right. If you can't pay your a certain number bill. of employees, you right. have to close. Right. You know, there's all sorts of things. So, I believe that the Senate decided to restore that money. So, we are staving that off for now. And I think that they were comfortable enough to do this because it is they know in Missouri we do have that, you know, it's only 1% of the budget here. It's only 5% of the budget there. Right. A bigger state or a state with a different setup might not be wanting to take this step yet because you would just be, like, closing down libraries. Um, But Missouri had the ability to do it, and since it's just a hot-button topic politically, Mm -hmm. they were able to get this through. It's just heartbreaking. Yeah. It really is. Like, even if it is resolved and it's not happening, it's just heartbreaking that it was even able to go that far. And it, you know, I think a lot of it is, like, people don't realize what libraries are actually... That's what I'm realizing, like, especially when I'm, like, speaking to someone new who doesn't know me on a day-to-day basis anymore. And they're like, so what, you know, what do you do at your job? Mm -hmm. And when I tell them everything that, like, a library is utilized for, it's like a lot of people don't realize what libraries are doing now. They don't realize that it's so much more than just you're coming in, you're checking out a book, and you're leaving. Or you're coming in, you're going to story time, and then you're leaving. Like, there are people who rely on us on a day-to-day basis just to get by. Yeah. Yeah. And so to strip that from somebody as a form of retaliation is just beyond, beyond me. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to um, pause, though, because we just got an email. Jessica sent it to us, and we got a postcard. And she said, "I we received this postcard today. Just wanted to pass on the encouragement. It's a postcard from the... I don't... <laughs> no, it's from a library in Seattle mm-hmm. and it says sending you support for all you do. And it says to our librarian friends, we don't know you, but we value you. Stay strong and uh, some other stuff, but it's from a cute little library in Seattle. Well, that's nice. They send us a postcard in support of Missouri libraries. That's nice. That was timely. <laughs> it literally just came in, 11.28. It's 11.29 <laughs> right now. But, yeah, that's really sweet. And so. then to end this on the worst note. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to link this in the description, to this article uh, from CODA. Mm-hmm. It's called Missouri Librarians Are Risking Jail Time for Doing Their Jobs. Yay. And it's talking about that law that was passed at the MLA and Mazel are... Um, Heavily suing, fighting. Yeah, suing the state for. Yeah. Um, and we this uh, the law is brand new. It mm-hmm. was passed in 2022. Enforcement goes into effect like very recently. Mm-hmm. So no one really knows what it's going to look like if yeah. someone is charged under this law. Mm-hmm. And this article is all about a librarian in Missouri who has been 
has had police come to their job uh, over more than two times, coming in to say, you know, it someone's called and said that there's sexually explicit material in your library. We need to check it out. And then the police have the discretion. I mean, this is how arresting someone works. The police have the discretion to look at that material, determine for themselves if they think it's pornographic, and if they do, they can arrest you. I mean, this law goes up to one year of jail time. So if they determine that it's pornographic, Mm -hmm. they can arrest you right there. And then it's going to go to the courts. And then the courts are going to have to decide whether that was pornographic or not. Right. And then either let you go or give you a big fine or send you to jail for a year. Right. So we're going and – that's, and that's how this is going to be resolved is in the courts mm-hmm. um, deciding whether this law – number one, the, the lawsuit from uh, MLA and Mazel is going to determine whether the law is, you know – follows the Missouri state constitution, the United States constitution, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then we're not going to know how this law affects anything until someone is charged and goes through the process in court. Right. So, and it's already happening. So, yeah, but it's a very interesting article from Coda. I would highly recommend anyone check it out. Hold it up on my desktop because I'm going to read that when we're done. Because anyone, I mean, anyone could just call the police and say there's something here. Right. And the police can come. I mean, it's a crime. Right. So oh, uh, the, the law says it's a crime, so the police can come investigate right. and then make their determination. It's just like when you get pulled over for a traffic stop. Mm-hmm. If the cop says you've been You're breaking speeding, the law. Yeah. then they take you to jail. You can maybe get out of that in court, but mm-hmm. if they make that determination right then and there, then that's... It's just how it goes. Holy moly. Crazy time. So stay informed. Yeah. Support the library. Support non-anti-book banning. Yeah. Just having like, everything. Support your local library. Yeah. As our... Our new shirts. Say I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> support your local library. Our summer reading shirts Please. this year. Please. Yeah. So... So what's going on in the library this month? Uh, I'm sure some happy things, right? Yeah, we've got a lot of programming going on. I'm just going to touch, like I always say, on just like the new stuff, the stuff that really stands out that we've never done before. But as always, we have Tuesday Night Movies, Tricky Tuesday Crafts, Wacky Wednesday, Take and Make Crafts. We've got a bajillion book clubs, um, bingo nights, uh, craft nights, so I guarantee if you get onto our website and check it out, there is something that you would love to come to. We've been having some great movies at the movie night, I will say. We have been having a lot of good movies. Bob is And a lot of newer ones. Bob is on... Like 2022s. Bob, Things you may have just missed. I know that Bob listens to this, actually, and (laughs) Bob is on my list right now because he beat us at trivia. Yeah. He kicked our butts. So... (laughs) You know what, Bob? Your movies are terrible. (laughs) Just like your trivia skills. (laughs) Just joking. They're both great. (laughs) Clearly. (laughs) Dang it. Um, Okay, so uh, beginning May 1st, we have Beginning Weaving, which is new. Uh, We've offered this once before, so this is our second offering, um, and this is a series. So this is the uh, basic stitches will will be taught at this program. And then some slightly more advanced stitches will also be in, introduced. Um, so even if you came to that first session, you can learn more in this new series. Is this weaving a blanket or a basket? I don't know. Or both? I don't know. I guess weaving is weaving. Yeah, you just weave whatever you want once you know how to weave. So I, yeah. this is with Janie downtown uh, May 1st at 530. And then on May 3rd at 6 p.m., we have Piecing It All Together Collage. So do you enjoy upcycling and creating original art? Come relax and have fun designing your own magazine collages with Hannah. This is the first time Hannah's offered a program, I think, that we've featured. So uh, way to go, Hannah. And then on May 4th at 5 p.m., May the 4th, Return of the Cake Pops. So uh, this is with Evelyn. So join us for cake pop making and a showing of the third episode of one of the largest science fiction movie franchises of all time. I'm going to guess it's Star Wars. But I don't know. I think you're correct. <laughs> Boom. Take that, Bob. 
uh, May 6th at 10 a.m. We have First Home Buyers 101. This is with Jen downtown. Are you thinking about buying a home for the first time? There's a lot to consider and it can be overwhelming. So let Sydney with Go Mortgage and Haley with Remax House of Dreams clue you in on what to do to get ready to buy your first home. This program is a great start on your starter home. I would have loved that before I bought a house. Yeah. That's a great offer, honestly. When I saw that, I was like, that is a genius Go check it out. I probably should. (laughs) Now that I'm a renter again. Holy moly. (laughs) Starting over. And then May 16th at 6 p.m., we have History Happy Hour at the Angry Swede Brewing Company. So that's the newer brewery downtown. It's very cool. It's like two blocks from the library, I think. Um, And then this says, can't wait for the St. Joseph Public Library's annual local history trivia night. Don't worry. Quench your thirst for knowledge with our monthly history happy hour. So we're doing this every month. And we'll bring you a lightning round of local history trivia in a historic location, the Angry Swede Brewing Company. There is no sign-up or registration fee, and you're welcome to bring a team or go at it solo. And so the first question is read at 6 p.m. If you have any questions, get a hold of Jennifer Sanders. That's really fun. From downtown. Yeah. Have you seen the Ang- – have you been to the Angry Suite? Have you seen I've the building? Seen, I've seen the building. It's a cool building down yeah. there. They've got a nice little patio. Yeah. It's cute. And then on May 23rd at 4.30 p.m., we are offering fairy houses. So we will provide the supplies you bring your imagination. Join us in design and take home your very own fairy house. And this is a uh, first come first serve, so supplies are limited. It doesn't look like you have to sign up though. That's with Lisa downtown. This is specifically for Shirley. Fairy houses. Yeah, okay. she has been obsessed. Well, she better go. Four thir- No, that means she has to leave early. Then we're on our own. Yeah, she can't go. She can't go. Sorry, Shirley. <laughs> Uh, May 25th at 6 p.m. We have True Crime Time, Becky Ray, and the Union Station Ghost. So I love Becky Ray. Uh, We brought her in for the paranormal programs we used to offer. Becky Ray is awesome. She's a librarian from Kansas City, but she's also a paranormal investigator on the side. Um, So the Union Station Massacre in Kansas City is still a topic that enthrills true crime fans. Becky Ray, a paranormal investigator, will be telling us about the event and its spooky aftermath that she has discovered in some of her investigations. Becky is a librarian by day, which provides her with plenty of opportunities to dive into various research topics, including location histories and character backgrounds. Join us for this thrilling installment. I want to go to that one, actually. Becky's so cool. Yeah, she's done a few things here. Yeah. And then on May 30th at, oh, it's all day. Never mind. I was like, why does that say midnight? <laughs> Evelyn is going above and beyond. Starts at midnight. Yeah. Break in bag, take home ga- uh, game for teens. So come into the downtown library to grab a take home break in kit. Solve the puzzles, unlock the bag, and keep the cool prizes that you find inside. So this is a first come first serve as well. So you'll pick that up and just take it home with you. Uh, but yeah. That is just, like, barely skimming the surface of everything we're offering. Yeah, that's 1 in 15. Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, there's so much. Truly something for everybody. And we work really, really, really hard to provide something for everybody. Yeah. Because we love you. (laughs) So much. And we promise we won't. I won't promise. Don't (laughs) promise anything. I won't promise. But. uh, Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because next time I'll be, like, in the pits. With summer reading. Oh, summer reading. <sighs> we made it through last year, though. We can do it. We can do it. Um, so I'm sure we'll see you... On the flip side. In a month. Yeah. I promise. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I might regret that, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. Cut that out. <laughs> cut it, cut it, cut it. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.